Welcome to my Sniper Gen Guide. In this video, I will be going over the build, what items you make, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is relatively flexible, since you can have a successful top 4 board with more than 2 or 3 different variations. The only thing Jin needs is 2 snipers and 2 clockwork. The core units are Caitlyn to be our sniper bot, particularly good in the early and mid game, but still a decent unit in the late game. Orianna provides peel through her AoE CC and shielding for our team with a really strong ultimate ability. She is also the strongest clockwork unit to synergize with Jin's trait. Janna synergizes really well with Orianna by buffing up her shields and also giving our team some magic resistance. The main reason she is a core unit for this comp is her ability to keep Jin safe from threats with her ability that pushes back enemies, briefly stunning them as well as healing our team. Braum doesn't directly synergize with Jin, but he is a great standalone unit having an amazing CC ability and provides a ton to our frontline. The remaining 3 units will depend a lot on what you hit and what you need in the current lobby. But a standard level 8 board looks like this. Here we add in Leona, Yumi, and Tarek. Leona provides frontline for our team, and she's buffing up the rest of our frontline with resistances. And she is also a bodyguard. Yumi gives us Scholar and provides CC with her ultimate. Tarek synergizes well with both Orianna and Janna, being an additional enchanter. And he is especially good if the socialite spot is in the back row for that game. Some other units you can easily fit in are Blitzcrank and Darius. They go over Yumi and Tarek. This is great if a lobby is AD heavy, but this variation is way better with a bodyguard spat as you don't have to run Darius late game. There is another variation that I think is really strong with a 5 or 6 innovator build, but this variation needs a very specific augment with innovator heart or soul, so we cannot go for this every game. But in the case when we do have it, we take up Braum, Leona, Tarek, and Janna to play Seraphine, Heimerdinger, Jace, and Zillion for 5 innovators. One thing I want to highlight here is that we almost never want to go for 4 snipers. This might look odd because Jen is a sniper himself, but you do have to run 2 bad units in order to get the 4 sniper buff. Tristana, Kogma, and Misfortune aren't going to be doing anything in the late game, so we would much rather run some different units that provide utility for our Jin to keep him alive. If this was a bit confusing to you or you are a newer player, I recommend you just stick to this variation until you get more comfortable with the comp. I will go more in depth on which of the variations you want to run in different situations in the late game part of the video. Jin is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Infinity Edge. This item scales really well with his kit and gives him consistent damage versus all types of enemy frontlines. The second item for him will be Deathblade, which gives him flat AD to amplify his damage and also scales well with IE. The third item wants to be Hurricane. This scales nicely with Jin's passive and allows Jin to attack multiple targets which is super helpful. Because Jin has fixed attack speed, he will attack relatively slow, so getting to attack another unit is fantastic. If you need to heal up against backline axes, Hodge and BT can also work as third items. And if you need to counter tanky units in the lobby, GS can also be a great third item. If there are a lot of bodyguard units, Last Whisper also works great when paired with IE to shred their armor. The main reason we don't run any defensive items on Jin is because we're running a lot of utility with our team. Janna provides healing, and Orianna shields and CCs multiple units, and you can always position around assassins. Other items that are good in this comp are Morello on Yumi or Orianna, Warmogs or Bramblevest on our main tank, which will usually be Leona or Braum or Jace if you're owning him. Dragon's Claw is also great on those units versus heavy AP comps. Spear of Sojin on Orianna, or any extra AP items you can make on her like Rabadon's or Jewel Gauntlet. Banshee's Claw is overall great as you can corner Jin with this item. And the best augments to go for in this comp are Thrill of the Hunt, Sniper's Nest, Soul and Emblem, Bodyguard Heart or Soul, Celestial Blessing, Item Grab Bag, Innovator Heart, Soul or Self Repair, Sunfire Board, Deadeye, Woodland Charm, Trade Sector, High End Shopping, Golden Ticket, New Recruit, Portable Forge, Windfall, and Level Up. My favorite ones out of these are Item Grab, High End Shopping, as well as any Sniper Trade Augments. The carousel priority for this comp is Sword, Chain, Belt, and Bow. We need a lot of swords for Jin and at least one bow, but alternatively, going for a strong tank item in the early game can also save us a lot of HP and guarantee good frontline items. Therefore, I do like starting Belt or Chain and have them pretty high in my priority list. Tank items are also really good in the case where you need to pivot. Since this comp revolves mostly around 4 and 5 cost units, we can play any opener we want to and then just transition into Jin later. 
but some of the best openers for this comp are three Innovator Scrap with Estriel as the item carrier. Camille can be taken out for either Sigs, Trundle, or Blitz for two Scraps. Two Snipers and two Bodyguards with Tristana being the item holder. Three Chemtech with Warwick as the item carrier. Or two Assassins with Talon as the item carrier. Once you've found your comp, we need to make items, and as a general rule, you want to make an item if you have four or more components. Some good items to slam, that transition well into Jin late game, are Bramble Vest, Warmogs, Dragon Claw, Banshee's Claw, Hand of Justice, and Infinity Edge. Deathblade and Runon's Hurricane are not that flexible of items, but you can slam them if you want to hard force Jin. Your early game strategy will depend a lot on your opener and how good your items are. In some games you will play for a win streak, and in some games you will play for a loss streak. I generally prefer win streaking, as this comp really shines if you're able to go for a fast 8 with a decent amount of money. If you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in depth on the subject. After the Krugs round, the general requirements to play Jin from this spot is to have at least one BF sword, but the more you have, the better. The units we have don't really matter, as we find most of them at level 7 or 8 anyways. Preferably we want to have 30 gold or more and 80 HP or more. During the mid game, you always hold Jin if you find him, and you even play him if you're playing the Sniper Bodyguard version instead of Tristana. You also want to hold the other units, if you don't lose Eco for holding them. If you are weak in the mid game, typically around 70 to 60 HP and loss streaking, you can roll at level 6 to stabilize. We do this to make sure we will have enough HP to go level 8 later in the game. How much you roll down depends on how strong the lobby is, but try not to go below 20 gold. Some good boards you can look into playing to stabilize with are Chemtech Innovators with Estriel or Trundle as the main carry, Sniper Bodyguards with Tristana as the carry, 5 Chemtechs with Warwick as the carry, Bruisers with Trundle carry, or Assassins with Shaco carry. Another way to stabilize in the mid game is to roll at level 7 at 3-5 and roll to end up with this comp to stabilize off of Gen 1 star. Personally, I don't like doing this as it is a bit risky and it's not that rewarding. The comp needs level 8 to be able to fit in enough utility for Jin to stabilize, and level 7 doesn't have that high of odds for forecast units. During the mid game, you always want to scout. You want to be looking for people's items, units, synergies, and what comp they're going for. With this information, we can get a better idea what variations our late game board should have. We also figure out what the best third item for Jin is. The Jin comp can support two players at max, so if you see more than that going for it, consider pivoting to another comp like Shaco, Urgot, or Challengers. On stage 4-1, you want to be level 7. From here, you need to decide whether you're rolling at level 7, or if you're doing a fast 8. Since this comp uses multiple 4-cost units, but also some 5-cost units like Yumi or Jace, we always want to roll at level 8 when possible. But in some games, we are not healthy or rich enough to do so. Therefore, you want to roll at level 7 if you're 70 HP or lower and loss streaking, or if you have less than 50 gold on 4-1 after leveling to 7. When rolling at level 7, this is the board you're looking to stabilize with. The goal from there is to go level 8 on 5-1 and roll for your final comp there, so try not to roll below 10 to 20 gold as we need the money to go level 8 later in the game. You want to go for a fast 8 when you are 70 HP or higher, have at least 50 gold or more after leveling to 7, when you won most of the rounds in the mid game, or if most people aren't rolling down at level 7. The goal when fast 8ing is to level and then roll down at level 8 on 4-5. Before you roll down at level 8, it's very important to know which units you're looking for. This is where all our previous scouting comes in handy. Some of the easy variations we can go for are 4 bodyguards to counter heavy AD or adding in more enchanters to counter AP. Tarek is a good fit for our comp in the games where the socialite spot is in the back row, so if the socialite spot doesn't benefit our Jin and we don't need the extra enchanter for the lobbies we're facing, then Jace and melee form is a good fit to provide frontline for our team plus the 2 enforcer trait. Once you have hit your comp at level 8, you have two different options. First one is to roll for Gen 3 star. It is a risky strategy, therefore I only do this if I have 6 or more Jins after my first rolldown, I'm uncontested, and I also have enough HP to do a second large rolldown later. There are some augments that also will lean you towards going for a Gen 3 star. Those are loaded dices from the high roller augment, golden ticket, or trade sector. The second option is to go level 9. In most cases, that will require you to be 40 HP or higher, and also have 2 starred every non-legendary unit. The more HP and gold you have, the less 2 stars you generally need. Going level 9 over gen 3 star is what I do in most cases, since there are a lot of value units you can fit in more easily at level 9. In addition, this will make it easier for us to 2 star our legendaries and make the strongest version of our board. If you are high rolling, the most capped version of the board looks like this. 
First, let's go over general positioning with this comp, then I will go over some in-depth positioning examples. General positioning looks like this. We have Caitlyn in the corner, so in the case of Blitzcranks on the enemy teams, we keep Jin safe from getting grabbed. If we have Trap Claw, we can corner the Jin to maximize his sniper trait even further. We have Janna in front to keep him safe, pushing any threats away and healing up Jin. Orianna is on the back next to Jin to provide him with extra utility. Leona is between our other two frontline units, so she can buff both of them with resistances. Braum is top left so that the enemy surrounding him will get hit with as much CC as possible. Yumi is right next to Braum to shield him and also stay on top of Braum once the fight starts. We also put Tarek on the right of Leona so that Leona is in between two units to guarantee her taking less damage from enemy boards, as keeping her alive for as long as possible is critical so she can keep getting her shield and casting to buff up our other frontline units. Now let's move on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the main threat is Lux. We always want Jin on the same side as Lux to keep him safe, or we can use Blitzcrank to hook in the Lux and kill her before she can contribute to the fight. We have Janna and Orianna close to him to keep him shielded and healed to withstand the AP damage from the enemy team. We put Yumi close to Leona, so she stays on top of her and helps her stay alive. Jin is on the right opposite corner of the enemy backline to be able to do amplified damage using his sniper trait. Leona and Tarek make sure the enemy frontline won't walk towards Jin. Against the second guy, the main threat is Shaco. We put Jin in the opposite corner of where the assassins are, and we surround him with units so they can't reach him. Caitlyn is our assassin bait, and Braum is placed in the back so he can CC the assassins the moment they attack him after killing Caitlyn. Orianna is safely placed between the bodyguards, so we ensure that she also casts. Against the third guy, the main threat is Jin and Orianna. We use Braum as a bait for enemy Blitzcrank to hook, so therefore our Braum can cast his ultimate in the enemy backline and CC them. We use our Blitzcrank to be able to hook the enemy Jin. Orianna is next to Jin with Janna to peel for him, while Janna also shields our frontline. We put these units at a safe distance from our Jin, because the enemy Orianna with her spell targets the largest group of enemies, so we want her to ult our frontline and not our Jin. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got nearly 4,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.